So the most common question I've had so far this year from you guys in my comments on YouTube and also through my website andyguitar.co.uk is how can I play guitar better with either big or small hands? Now everyone has different size hands, necks can change a little bit and we'll be talking about that. But the people that are asking this are generally beginners and there's a few things I wanna communicate straight away in this video and then I'm gonna give you all my best, biggest tips or big or small hands, all in this one video. Timestamps are at the bottom of the screen if you want to skip ahead to any particular thing. But first of all, I wanna give one concept which is huge for anyone first learning guitar, and even those that have been playing a couple of years sometimes fall foul of this, which is just how we hold a guitar neck compared to how we hold anything else in our lives. If I pass this guitar to you and I asked you to just hold it and support it, you would probably support the neck like this. This is how we hold things. This is how someone would naturally grab a guitar neck and hold it like this. This is not how we want to fret a guitar, especially in the earlier days. As we get more intermediate and advanced, we actually do a lot of things where we hold uh, the guitar neck like this to play actually quite fancy chords like this one. But we don't want to do that with our basic beginner chords, especially when we are getting strings not quite ringing out. The most common chord this happens on for people with bigger hands, larger fingers, gentlemen, I'm mainly talking to you for the larger fingers, is this A major chord and fitting fingers one, two, and three into this relatively small space. I've got some tips for that. Perhaps either with larger or smaller fingers, you're trying to play the C major chord, but every time you play the C major chord, you are getting dead strings and it's not ringing out like this it sounds a bit more like this notice straight away to get those strings dead I actually place my fingers more like this which we're going to talk about in a second but to really communicate this idea of how to hold basic chords or most things when you are first learning guitar I want you to try this place your first finger at string three, fret number five. This was where my second dot is on my guitar and my second inlay, or you can count up one, two, three, four, five on string three. Then place the middle finger next to it and then just the third finger next to it. We don't play too many total beginner chords uh, that use the little finger or the pinky. We generally need to make these first three fingers as confident as possible. Now, how am I holding this? which is how I want you to play your beginner chords. I'm holding it with my thumb directly behind the guitar neck in the middle. Not on top, not too low down at the bottom of the neck, right in the middle. And then the fingers are placed down one, two, three, up against the fret, but kind of vertical to the frets. This first finger is not like this. The underside of that first finger or the palm of my hand is not touching the bottom of the guitar, it is not like this. We're gonna go like this, one, two, three. Even just with your first two fingers, this is a really good exercise. Just like this, if you can with the first three. What that teaches you is basically the three things that we need to do to play any chord well if you're getting dead strings, which is to really curl the first knuckle of your fingers so that this part of your fingers, the part that's touching the strings, is at a 90 degree angle to the fretboard or there or thereabouts. The thumb should be lower if you're getting dead strings. I have my thumb up here all the time. I often have it here when I'm playing basic open chords but if you're getting dead strings, in the middle of the neck. And finally, don't have the palm of your hand touching the bottom of the fretboard or string one at all. There needs to be a space, enough space in fact, to kind of get a finger or a pencil through here is kind of perfect. So if I do that, I can get my finger through there. And actually that string still rings out with a gap through there. Once you can do that, or once you have those principles covered, we can look at this with any basic open chord. Super easy one, D major. Most people can play a D major chord. However, can you play it with the fingers at an angle, not touching string one at all, and with the thumb a little bit lower? With the thumb here, I'm playing a D major chord. Like this. 
Is that something that rings out or nice? It probably is. But once you can get it on the D major, can you do that same thing on an A major chord? With that thumb lower. Most people want to grip stuff like this. That's how you want to hold stuff. And you can do that later. Once you've got strings five, four, three, two, one, ringing out and that A major chord. One thing I will say about the A major chord is I often play the A major chord like this. This is a great higher level technique. And it's how Keith Richards plays guitar. Lots of great riffs played like this. But this is tricky to get 0, 2, 2, 2, 0 ringing out without that thinnest string, again, getting muted. I'd actually want this to ring out. And I do that by bending that uh, knuckle here. We kind of kink out like this. That's the technique to be able to get this ringing out and allow you to play an A major chord with one finger and save your fingertips because we're using the flat part of the A major. If I was changing A to D, like this, like this is great. If I was changing to a bar chord, this is great. That A major chord like that, or with the thumb over the top, superb stuff. Can you do that same thing with a C major chord? Knuckles really bent over so we're not touching a string underneath like this. We're like this. Thumb purposefully lower than you would normally have it. Middle of the back of the neck, which means that you cannot touch the bottom of this and have your thumb at the middle of the neck. It will be uncomfortable. Don't touch the bottom of the neck. 90 degrees, thumb in the middle. Then there shouldn't be a problem with that ringing out. Once that's comfortable and you can change between all your beginner cowboy chords, with the thumb quite low. And at the middle of the back of the neck, you might start to be able to pull that thumb up and do really handy things like mute string six on a C chord, where when I have my fingers on this angle and kind of curl this first finger over but still do not touch the bottom of the neck, like this, super handy. But if anything's not ringing out, and you like this, or you, if you find this an awful stretch, thumb lower. Thumb at the middle of the back of the neck, or just a little bit higher here, but not over the top, because that's gonna hamper your grip. That's gonna make you touch the bottom of the guitar, and it's gonna mute those strings. Beyond just where to place your fingers, here's three things that can really help anyone with big or small hands who feel like they're not getting basic open chords ringing out and feel like maybe guitar isn't for them. I wanna tell you something straight away that I think will keep you playing and really motivate you. And it is that people with larger hands and bigger fingers at the tips and larger, wider fingers can often find some of the basic open chords and some of the basic things on guitar a struggle. But bigger hands are a huge, huge advantage when you're looking at things at an intermediate and especially at a higher level. We need bigger hands and bigger fingers to be able to do big stretches on guitar, to make big bends, to have stronger hands, to be able to play bar chords easier and all these sorts of things. It can be a massive advantage. I think of players such as Chuck Berry, Slash, some of the best guitar players ever kind of have bigger hands. There are players that actually have much smaller hands than the average person. They're also fantastic at guitar. Angus Young was a definite inspiration at this point, because I don't have the biggest hands or the biggest fingers in the world. Angus Young has smaller hands than average, and there's actually a way that he's able to play those super fast lines, but he plays it a little differently to how people normally can. And this is that final point. You might have to play things a little bit differently no matter what it is, no matter what the size or the guitar that you have, things sometimes, you need to change things. If I was playing, for example, A minor pentatonic shape one, I would play it like this with the third finger stretching. Angus Young tends to play that with his little finger and then does a bend actually with all four fingers.
Now, I wasn't there when he learned how to do that. I wasn't there when he was practicing. He has his own reasons, I'm sure. But I'm guessing he did that because he learned guitar as a kid. He learned as a teenager with smaller hands. And he just found it easier or more comfortable to use his fourth finger to hit those notes and to bend up with kind of all four fingers, or at least fingers two, three, and four, when bending those strings up to be able to do the kind of bluesy bends that he does. Now this reminds me of a piece that I know, it's a song called Cannonball Rag, it's ragtime finger style, and I couldn't learn one particular chord shape in this or one particular move, and I had to change it so that I'm just playing the same notes but on different strings uh, higher up the neck. Let me give you an example, so Cannonball Rag. <laughs> That's the start of it. And then there was this other move. Now, I can't even remember where it was. It's, uh, so it's a move around this part of the neck, and I played up here. Because I couldn't do the stretch to do it lower down. And I know plenty of songs like that where I just change something. And it's also the way that I teach beginner's guitar where we use a capo, where there perhaps wouldn't be a capo in the original, but the capo version will get rid of bar chords. There's always more than one way to play the song. And as long as you're still playing the song and it's recognizable as that, I think that's always a good thing. And maybe it enables you to do something else you couldn't do before. Maybe it enables open strings to ring out more and that sounds great. Maybe it enables you to sing along or join in with other people. I think that's a real advantage rather than a disadvantage. If you've enjoyed this video and you find you've got something from it, I've got two free videos that I would link to from this that I think you should watch straight after they're on YouTube. The first one is how to speed up chord changes. The second one is a great finger placement exercise. If you like those two videos, check out the Technique tune-ups, which I will link to at the top of the description below and also on screen now. Let me know if you found this video beneficial in the comments below, and I really hope to see you next time on this Handy Guitar YouTube channel.